All right, ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we are back up and running the way that we would hope to be. Yes, yes, yes. And we're going to start off this match. Welcome to the Acer Team Story Cup. My name is Total Biscuit. It is early here on the East Coast of the United States. If you happen to be watching on the West Coast, then you're a crazy, crazy man. Unless, of course, you happen to be watching VODs or working a night shift. In which case, welcome to the show. I aim to please. As, of course, does Team Liquid and Team Millennium. We ready to rock and roll? I'm sure we are here. One second. <laughs> One second. Da, da, there we go. All right. We are ready. And here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Acer Team Story Cup match one right here between Team Liquid Zenio. He is in the blue trunks. He is playing Zerg to the southwest of Newkirk Precinct versus his opponent, Millennium's Daishi. He is in the red trunks playing Terran to the southeast. Ah, good. A little bit more Ace of Team Story Cup. Everybody loves it. As they should. It's good team league. And this is going to be an interesting start right here. Daishi, a man that tore it up in the WCS qualifiers. Versus Zenio, one of the less successful members of Team Liquid. I don't think anyone's really going to dispute that. Unfortunately, someone who hasn't really put a lot of results on the board. Hasn't. I mean, he's been doing okay in Pro League, but not amazingly well. So opening up with him is... It's not the worst choice in the world, certainly. It's not like you're playing against Kesper team here. You are playing against Millennium, who has some strong Europeans as well as 4GG, who can tear it up pretty well. But he's kind of a solid starter. Don't necessarily know what to expect from him. Probably not going to be getting any kind of all-kill scenario from him, but he'll play well. I think that's what you could say about Zenio there. Hatchery first, coming out right here from Zenio. And then a barracks from Daishi. No sign of a gas from Daishi, so we'll be seeing our one barracks expand here on no gas. There's really nothing else you can do from this situation that makes any sense. There we go. CC's going to be on the low ground, as you can see. Daishi's going to mine a couple of minerals first. Then he's going to take a quick little turn. How neat. Back forth, back forth, back forth. And hey, here is your command center. Bing, bada, boom. In the meantime, Zenio would take an extractor of his own, so not going gasless. I like that. Always good to get some speed going initially. Can't trust the pesky Terran these days. Absolutely not. They've got a lot of different tricks up their sleeve. Spawning pool just about to complete here for Zenio as well, so we will be seeing in fairly short order the addition of Zergling speed and map control gained by the Zerg player. Oh, this is a nice quick expansion here from Daishi. So, he's going to be catching up. Ooh, a little bit of lag already. That's the last thing we want to see. We don't want to see our players lagging today. Daisy's got his expansion going pretty quickly. So, this is the kind of situation where the Zerg player is suddenly forced into saying, well, do I attack or do I take a third base? Because I always want to be one base ahead of my opponent whenever possible. And usually, the Terran player sits there and says, yeah, you know what? I'm not worried about you attacking me because I'm confident that I can defend it. That's why I put down a third command center, because I am a greedy, greedy Terran. So what do you do in that situation when a Terran puts down a third command center behind all of this stuff? Well, in that situation, you're almost forced to attack, because taking a third and a fourth base to play catch-up is not a very wise thing to do. You don't have enough units, you don't have enough drones to actually saturate. At this early stage of the game, you just don't have the lava to make that work. Nice catch there. Zenio is able to shut that down nice and quickly. Note that Zenio immediately pulled out of gas here. So he's going to be going for a very economical approach. He's not going to be rushing up to Lair here. I would expect to see a third base coming. Doesn't make any... I mean, he's not going to attack. Because what is he going to attack with? He doesn't have any gas. So unless he wants to attack with pure Ling, which is just ridiculous. And you just don't do that. Because, hey, bunkers are good and so are wall offs. He is going to be taking a third base. And he's going to be maxing as many drones as possible. He is building four more links, taking up to a grand total of eight. So looking for a little bit of map control. But that really is about it. Now, the good kind of situation that you can be in here. Did I misspell Zenio? Oh, wow. I did, didn't I? Ugh, take TV lagging here as well. <laughs> That's kind of the last thing you want. I'll believe it. I misspelled Zenio. I, I'm sorry. It's really early in the morning. And R is... Kind of right next to it, but not at all. I'm fixing it. Give me a second. 
Zerio. I am so sorry, Zenio. I really am. What a dirt moment for me. There you go. I fixed your name. I am very sorry. Ling's actually making their way in here. They're going to get an SCV kill, and they're also going to cancel the supply depot. So there's a slight problem with what Daishi did here, which was he completely ignored the possibility of Ling's coming into his mineral line. This is actually going to suck for a little while. There is a Hellion coming out, but one Hellion isn't enough. Two Hellions on the other hand. That's enough to drive him away. That was a nice little grab there. Nice little run by by Zenio. Did some damage. He lost like one Ling and he killed two SCVs and wasted some mining time. And he also got information on the Hellions. So that was brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. Zenio must be happy with that. He should be at any rate. Gas being taken here by Zenio, going all the way up to 4, so we shall be seeing a transition through to Lair fairly shortly. Bear in mind, of course, he is taking Evolution Chambers, so he's going to have to sink some gas down there, 250 to be precise. 150 into Carapace, and then 100 one would assume into melee attacks. He may go range, but of course, since he doesn't even have a Roach Warren up yet, it doesn't make a lot of sense. So yeah, he's going melee, and he's going to be building a lot more links. Playing a little bit more of a sort of Startail lifestyle of constant aggression, little attacks here and there where he can do it, which I like a lot. Third base has now been taken here by Xenio, and he's going to establish that as quickly as possible. The Hellions, of course, will move in and try their best to deny, but there are a lot of links on the map, and the creep spread is not too shabby at all. The Hellions can go up to the third base, but there is no real purpose. They can't really do anything yet. There's been no drone transfer. Ling's trying to actually move around and flank, and Zenio might be able to catch this. Looks to get the lockdown. It doesn't quite have enough Lings there to make that work, though. There are six Hellions, which makes this a little bit tricky. Yeah, that's not going to happen. He realizes that and backs off. In the meantime, what is our Terran player going for? Well, there's Widow Mines being produced, and there is also a Starport being put up. So, we'll see a couple of defensive Widow Mines. We then, of course, may see a Widow Mine drop. No sign of an armory yet from the Terran player, so a Hellbat drop doesn't seem to be on the cards here. Mostly Marine Marauder with Mines. So, the Biomine style in play, nothing wrong with that. I like the Biomine style. And you've got a lot of flexibility with that. You can be very defensive as well as very offensive. Six gas being taken here by Xenio. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, and there is the Spire coming up. That is to be expected. And there is not enough defense here. The Hellions managed to make their run by and kill a single drone, which is probably quite disappointing for the Terran. Ling's moving into position, posturing to try and defend against that. There's the armory coming down, but it's timed with the upgrades. So I would not expect to see Hellbats at this stage. At least not deliberately. That is not what he is specifically going for. He is going for upgrades. Notice how these are lined up with the completion of the armory. Lot more racks coming down, so bio mine all the way. Adding another reactor on there. Only two mines out so far. He may elect simply not to build widow mines at all. Hellions make their way back on the creep. Quick scan. And a couple of widow mines placed down as well. So he's gonna actually try and drag the lings and banelings over them, I think. Xenio's a little bit cautious though. I think he spots them. He smells something, certainly. You can actually see Widow Mines, for those of you who don't know. There is a very, very small bump. And you can certainly see them when you get shot by them. Yeah, that, that kind of tends to reveal them. Probably best that the Queen went down rather than a large number of Lings and Banelings, which will be used to defend this push. This is a 1-1 one, one push. It's just before combat shields. It does have stim, though. Doesn't have a concussive shell yet, but it's a pretty powerful push. There's a lot of units making their way towards the third base. They will deny that fourth base. That doesn't get cancelled there by Xenio. A little bit of a slip up. Not what you want. So, can Xenio defend this with Ling Baneling? Because right now he does not have enough mutalisks by any stretch of the imagination to properly support this attack. His Baneling speed is not completed. However, Daishi elects not to split at all. So, loses the majority of Lings at the side there. And also loses a lot of Marines. There we go. Rolling Banelings are now in effect. Detonations go off. Most of the Marines killed as well. However, Daishi does have a lot more units here. Is moving in. Off goes one of the Widow Mines. Mutalisks now moving into position. And this is not what Xenio wanted to be using these Mutas for. He's lost a lot of Mutalisks already to this attack. One might also even say that because of that Mutalisk loss, that attack was worthwhile. That was, what, six Mutas killed? They will not be harassing anything right now. The remaining drop makes its way to the natural and is then cleaned up. So overall damage done. Ten workers killed by Xenio in total. Whereas only nine have been killed by Daishi. 
So he's in a decent spot, but he did lose a lot of muters there. He's only on 10. He was supposed to be on more like 16. Off goes yet another Widow Mine. He needs to do something about that. He needs to get an Overseer out to detect these Widow Mines before he loses more units to them. A second push is gearing up right now. This CC at the center is nice and greedy. It's actually, of course, using Orbital Command instead of a Planetary Fortress. Fourth CC going down here as well. Reinforcements now streaming across the map for an assault once again on the third base. Less dangerous, I feel, unless, of course, it runs into Widow Mines. A lot more muters and rolling Banelings now available, and plus two is about to kick in for the Zerg player. So I think Xenio is in a good spot, honestly. Utilisks now wheeling around. They would love to be harassing right now, but honestly, they need to be on the defensive, which is actually a nice play here by Daishi, I feel. Keeping the Mutalisks on his opponent's side of the map means that there are way more drop possibilities for him, and it also means that his worker line isn't getting slaughtered, which is always nice for any player. That allows Daishi to get up to 70 SCVs here. An attempt to take a hatchery at the front here is most likely going to be denied. Daishi, on the other hand, doesn't seem to be interested in attacking it, so he's allowing Xenio to get up his fourth. I don't necessarily know if I agree with that. In the meantime, we're going to see interesting transition here from Xenio. It's going to start to research missile attack after getting plus one, plus one, and is going to get Enduring Locusts. He is also going to get an obscene amount of drones. He's going to go up to about 90 here. That's a huge amount. Obviously, that means he can get a lot of static defense up as well. He could turn it into that, but it means his army is going to be fairly small. Swarm hosts are a pretty good option here, I think, but can you get them going, more to the point? Muta's now moving into position, doing a little bit of damage here and there, taking out the missile turret. Uh, Daishi, that's a supply depot. <laughs> Please don't attack it. There's no Zerglings hiding in there. A couple of workers killed here and there, a little bit of nice harass. However, this allows Daishi to move across the map, and the Mutalisks are in a really awkward spot. However... Look what he finds. Zenio actually snipes off a couple of medevacs. What a nice move that was. And now the fourth base under threat. This is where the reckoning occurs. He's catching his opponent mid-transition, which I don't really like. Widow mines are in play. However, two of them just... At least I think I saw a couple of them pop off. No, they didn't. He's currently Ling Bane Ling. He's looking to try and get swarm hosts out right now. An attack going on at the third base. Going to deal a lot of damage. That hatchery is going to die by the looks of it. Banelings moving in in all possible manners. They're going to roll over that, and he saves that hatchery. What a move. What a move. On 37 hit points. In the meantime, the attack on the fourth continues. A spread out Daishi here. Admittedly, I'm more worried about all of these nasty, nasty Widow Mines. Turns out, however, Xenio is not at all. Using the Locust to bust them down and then moving forward to engage. And picking off as many Widow Mines as possible. He still loses his fourth base here, however. And this push is going to continue. Banelings and Locusts are moving into position to try and defend it. There's currently seven Swarm Hosts on the field to try and hold up against this. Mutalisks are moving across the map to attack the fourth base of the Terran. Banelings connect. Daishi is still able to split fairly well here, however, and is pushing up to the natural. This is the thing, though. He's having to battle against these constant attacks by Swarm Hosts. Will there be enough Lings and Locusts to actually clean this up? No, there will not. GG. Wow. All right. Good Lord. That was a nice grindy playstyle there by Daishi. He just continued to make his way up the ramp, and he was losing units left and right, but I feel the Banelink connections were perhaps not efficient enough in order to actually defend, and, well, there you go. Xenio GG's, and Daishi puts his first win on the board there, and an interesting style. I like it very much. It's something that didn't even involve drop play at all. Terrans are favoring drop play these days, but Daishi didn't use it at all. He just went for a straight push, big Biomine style, and ground his opponent up and caught his opponent mid-transition, perhaps most importantly. Building upgrades, tr trying to transition through to Swarm Hosts, trying to get plus one, that kind of thing. Bit awkward. Bit awkward and wonky for Xenio. So one on the board here for Millennium. Nice play there by Daishi. Who does Liquid send out next? We'll find out very shortly, folks. Don't go anywhere. Oh, uh, yes indeed, who is quite the Zerg player. We're going to find out if he has the stones to take down his Millennium opponent. We will be finding out very shortly. All right. Just swapping the scoreboard around because I know you guys prefer that the scoreboard kind of points in the general direction of the actual players on the screen. So there we go. I have given you that. Welcome to Daybreak. Millennium's Daishi. 
He is already up one game in this best of nine series here for Team Millennium. He is in the red trunks playing Terran to the southwest. Versus his opponent, Liquid TLO. He is in the blue trunks and he is playing Zerg to the northeast. You can never really know what to expect from TLO, honestly, but what I can tell you is that he's a very solid Heart of the Swarm Zerg player. He knows his stuff. Daishi, as you can see, also knows how to play. <laughs> he's pretty good. He just beat down one of the Korean Team Liquid players, leaving a couple remaining, and that and it really depends as to whether or not Tasia will even play. You gotta bear that one in mind. Hello, Daishi, what you doing? What you doing? You grabbing the gas? Alright. Changing build here for Daishi. Went barracks first and then straight into gas on 12 supply. Nice and early. TLO, I'd imagine, is going to go hatch first here. I can't really see him doing anything else. There it is. Hatchery is down. So we're going to be seeing a little bit of tech out of Daishi. Question is, what is he going to do with it? Is he planning on opening Reaper? Bit of a big map for it. Takes a while for it to get there. Which means that there's plenty of time to get a queen out, so it's not really that effective. Especially considering that he's not going to have the gas for it yet. But I mean, actually, no, I mean, it's going to be close enough. He could open Reaper. There we go. That's exactly what he's going to do. As I say, it takes a little while for it to get across the map. So this is perhaps one of the least effective maps for Reaper. But it's still decent for scouting and just being generally annoying, keeping your opponent honest. Considering the timing of the pool, it's certainly going to hit before the Queen comes out. So it's going to be up to the Zerg player to do the best that he possibly can to avoid taking damage. There's actually been comments on the forums by some Zerg pros that say it's not really up to the Zerg player to avoid taking damage. It's up to the Terran player to not do any. Daisy's going to get a second Reaper to follow this one up as well. Interestingly enough, he's actually taking a rather odd route here. I guess... Well, I was going to say, I guess he's checking for some weird positioning of the hatchery, but no, he's actually just moving around here. It may very well be that he is trying to avoid the overlords. But one way or the other, he's here now. He spots that the hatchery is there. The second reaper is on its way. Lings are on the way out. Queens are on the way out. And here's the problem with this timing when you go hatchery first. Nice little save there by TLO on one of those drones. He is most likely going to lose this one. And there's nothing he can really do about it. Tries to pull a few drones and surrounding with drones. I mean, as I said, you just have to make a mistake as a Terran player in order for that to actually work. Lings managed to get their little claws on him, which is always nice. Two workers killed so far. Has it paid for itself yet? Well, he's going for three Reapers here, so it might very well end up doing just that. Another Reaper comes along. The Ling's actually running in for a little bit of scouting information, trying to drag the Reaper away, which they have successfully managed to do. Daishi regenerating health on this Reaper in the meantime. I like this move here by TLO, simply because it's giving him that opportunity. It's making sure that his queens come out and that he gets Lings at his main base to actually defend against these. Two more command centers being put down behind this. One there and then one there as well. And there's the reactor and the factory. Time together, so I'd expect to swap over into Hellion at this stage. Could see Widowmine, but it's most likely going to be Hellion. Queen trying to defend against three Reapers. You can't really do that. And this is why. The Reapers can pull back and they can regenerate. It's a very, very tricky thing to do. TLO wants to avoid building static defense, of course, because that's an expensive investment so early on in the game. That's kind of... All, that's a win, really, for the Terran player. If you force your opponent to build static defense, that means less drones, less military units on the field. TLO moving in once again. Link speed is on its way, but it's not going to be up for quite some time. Good control here by Daishi to this point. And those two queens are eventually going to drive these Reapers back. The problem is they're going to be back, and these queens are not going to be regenerating health at the same speed the Reapers are. Reapers backing off to the Zelnaga Watchtower right now. A couple of Widow Mines out, and then into Hellions. Nice and smart, little bit of defense. Actually, no, he canceled the Widow Mines. He was building them and then went straight to Hellion, which is an interesting move. Third base has managed to come down here for TLO. And it's only a matter of time until that speed comes up and Reapers essentially become useless. Uh, it's going to be a dead queen, though. So, you know, I'll totally take that. That in itself, once again, a win. The, uh, a bit of miscontrol there, I feel, by TLO. Also, miscontrol by Daishi, actually, losing a Reaper. Unnecessary. Speed is about to complete. And once it does, TLO should be absolutely fine. Walling off with the evolution chambers, resisting... I was going to say resisting the urge to build a spine crawler, but he's just putting that one down right now. Guess he kind of has to with Hellions there. He can't really just let them run around freely. 
Now, if they come in, they're probably going to get surrounded and killed. There is now a queen up, and there are speedlings. Unfortunately, Tielo... Oh, no. He maybe gets the... He maybe gets a surround here. Goes for it. Takes the Reaper down. Oh, nice. Nice. Beautiful. Absolutely fantastic. That was wonderful. Then cancels the spine crawler. Love it. That went really well for him. It was annoying. It was an annoying piece of harassment, but you got to bear in mind the Terran did commit quite a lot to it. That delayed his tech quite significantly. Another factory going down. Three more factories going down. Daisy's playing mech. Okay, interesting. No starports. He's just going to play a pure mech composition. Ling's got to be a little bit careful here. That actually detonates on the Overlord. Kills some Ling's as well. There are more Widow Mines. But they actually don't stop the run by. TLO just dodging mines left, right, and center right here. Into the mineral line he goes. Where he stops, nobody knows. Significant economic damage being inflicted. Oh, he always makes his way into the main. On the mines, I think, are killing more workers than anything else. Ling's continuing to ravage this SCV line. Loving it. A great, great response to the playstyle from Daishi. Catching Daishi as he builds more factories. And look at the information the TLO gets. Look at what he knows. He knows there's four factories. He knows he's up against mech. And he killed seven workers. Wasted a lot of mining time too. Just with the Ling run by. Nice little bit of aggression there. I love it. That was well timed. Armory on the way here. Going to start rolling for those upgrades. May also be starting to roll for Hellbats. Roaches being brought in as a response going up to Lair Tech here as well. Zerg's got a lot of different options against mech. The question is, will TLO be able to properly execute it? To be fair, TLO does play on the European servers a lot. Mech is actually kind of prevalent there. Terrans are loving it right now, and I don't really blame them. It's a good style. Heavy mine usage, a lot of tank usage. Hellbat usage at the front as well. Infestors and Aspire coming out here. It's a good option. I like that a lot. If you get your Spire out, then you're going to start to force Thors out of him. That's going to cost him a lot of gas, especially if he's trying to mech on two bases. You continue your Ling run buys, try and deny the third, then it's like, oh, you're mecking on two bases. Good luck building a lot of Thors, and also keeping up with everything else. And at that point, a mech composition could simply get overwhelmed by sheer weight of numbers. Also got to make sure that your mech composition is able to harass as well. TLO moving in, picking off a couple of Marines here. Excellent control, actually, by him. I've got to point that out. He is... Microing very, very well here with his links. He's saving a lot of them, pulling them back. Engaging well against the mines as well. He's got a couple of overseers here. Another mine goes off. He's losing links to mines. That's actually fine. Getting rid of the mines and making sure that that map control and trap presence is gone is fairly important. And Daishi takes his CC at the front. Really? No planetary? Well, you can get away with it. If you play mech, yeah, you can get away with it. Mostly because you've got tanks and they're pretty good too. So, something to consider. And that is a pretty early hive. Wow, TLO actually going for the sub-12 minute hive here. Crazy, going all the way up. Nice. Well, if he's going up against tank heavy style, he may very well be wanting to use vipers. Since he built a spire and then went straight to hive, I have to assume that's a possibility. You've also got to bear in mind that Broodlords work so well against a mech composition. They grind it down, especially when combined with infestors. And you might think, well, Broodlord and Fester doesn't really work anymore, right? Yeah, it does. Against Mech, it definitely does. It's an ideal style. Daishi playing very defensively, which is allowing TLO to take a fourth base, take his hive, and build a round of 18 more drones here. Daishi not showing any signs of wanting to attack yet. He also doesn't have a starport, if I recall correctly. No, he doesn't. No starport on the field here for Daishi whatsoever. So what harassment opportunity does he have? Well, really, he can only use his Hellions. He's going to now push out to the fourth base. Don't believe this has actually been spotted yet. There's a couple of overseers just kind of hanging around here. Nice. Creeping up the factories. I like that very, very much. Contaminate ability being used to slow down the production of the tanks here. However, there is this big, big push from Daishi coming towards the third base. Could also cut off the fourth base as well. Losing both of these would be disastrous. Losing the hive, of course, would be disastrous. We're going to see some swarm hosts coming out here. Not a bad idea against tanks. The, the nice thing about using swarm hosts in that situation is the tanks tend to shell the hellbats. Which is really annoying to deal with. Broodlords, as I thought, might be coming out here from TLO. I just don't want to see TLO get caught mid-transition here. A couple of hellbats move in. This would be actually a great time for TLO to do a Ling run by on the third base because there's very little defending it right now. 
Roach, or oh, you could do a Roach run by, or Roach flank. It, it, running his Roaches into this isn't going to really work out so well, especially not with that drop capability. I think he's got to accept that his fourth base is dead. This is a decent number of Roaches moving forward here. TLO with plus two Carapace is going to help him quite a bit against these Hellbats. Will he be able to engage on this third? Mm, apparently he thinks not. I mean, he can do it. He can pick at it, certainly. The question is, will Daishi actually take the bait? Right now, TLO's playing chicken with Daishi, saying, come back and defend your third base. And honestly, I don't think that is going to happen, because I think Daishi's got enough units to stop this. It's going to take some damage, certainly, but this hive on the third is the real risk. These swarm hosts are out of position, needs to borrow them, get them out of the way. Broodlords are morphing, though. So this is on borrow time, and as soon as those Broodlords pop, this tank composition suddenly gets melted. All right, here we go. The Broodlords are up. There's only a single four. It can't really get into position against this, and immediately Daisy's like, oh, damn it. That was the last thing that I wanted to see from you. And finally, he's producing Vikings. Roaches have managed to make their way. I don't know how he snuck them past here, but he did. Snipes off an SCV and then loses the rest of his Roaches. Okay, he could have actually made his way into the mineral line there, I feel. That would have actually been wonderful, because he was going to lose those roaches anyway. So I don't think that was the best of ideas, but hey, ne never mind. Second star ball coming up here from Daishi. wants to try and really get those Vikings rolling. Now that he knows he's up against Broodlords, there are not a lot of Broodlords on the field. But there are Swarm Hosts. There was like one Infester, but I think that died. So Broodlord Swarm Host. That's going to be a grindy composition if I've ever seen it. Ground Lords and Air Lords. Daishi moving into a defensive posture here on his third base. It's a couple of Widow Mines sneakily positioned here by Daishi, which is going to make a re-expanding here difficult. And this is going to be that nasty push. Nice Ling run by into the main mineral line once again. Daishi has to remain unseaged at this stage to try and deal with all of this stuff that's flying at him. There's a couple of Corruptors out there. Viking count is currently at four, not so high. I'd like to see some creep spread towards this, and that's exactly what we're seeing. Need to see a little bit more. Maybe get some queens forward to start transfusing these broodlords. And this is the siege position. TLO puts in place the hard contain. The siege tanks are sieging and they're actually just going to shell. Oh, wow, that was nasty. He managed to get a scan and a target lock on all of those swarm hosts doing significant damage. The locusts move in and got the tank line, but that did break that contain pretty hard. Corruptors are moving in to engage, but they are unupgraded. The broodlords are very much dead now. More Swarm Hosts being produced, more Corruptors being produced. The Siege is still on, but a lot of that was broken there. The back of it was broken, but at what cost? A lot of Siege Tanks were sacrificed to actually make that happen. He got a great salvo off on those Swarm Hosts. But yeah, the Contain is broken now, so his third base is fairly safe, and his fourth base is being established behind it. A fifth base is coming up as well. And here's the thing, TLO has not established his fourth yet. He lost it. He's going to take one at the front here, which is always risky against a siege tank heavy player. And he can't take this base because he is being continually denied by these Widow Mines. A very, very sneaky maneuver. TLO now moves into the flank and now has air superiority with his Corruptors. So he's going to try and take out some Vikings. He fails to do that. And these Corruptors are now taking fire from that Thor on the ground. Here comes the engagement. TLO should be able to take these Vikings out without too much of a problem. Corruptors are, of course, more than a match. Medivac's now coming out. We may see some drops. We may see some harassment coming in right here. And here come the Locusts. I imagine that Thor is going to be the first target here. He's going to be saying, hey, look, Locusts. Uh, yeah, I probably shouldn't be fighting that. Thor's taking a lot of damage. Daishi is able to pull it back, however. Good siege tank fire. Daishi is actually in a great position here. These Locusts have got to go this way. These tanks get to shell them here, 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 and here. All the way down. It's nasty. He realizes that this might not work, and he's actually looking for a transition into Ultralisk. Bit of a wonky transition because his upgrades for his ground attack are not that great, but his carapace is pretty good. So you're going to see these locusts are actually going to do nothing unless he's able to get some more out. These three siege tanks are more than up to the task of dealing with that. Adding some vipers into the composition, however, that's where things start to get interesting. TLO mixing it up here with those tier three units. Fourth base now established. Fifth base now established as well. At least looking to be. Creeping up this area here so that the expansion is a little bit more difficult to do. Now we've got TLO once again pushing with these locusts. They're, they're not really getting anywhere. They're just getting continuously shelled. But it is keeping Daishi locked down. A couple of Hellbats now being moved in. Question is, what does he do with them? Where's he going to drop them? I would imagine he's going to... Well, if he hits the fourth base, that kind of doesn't make any sense. He'll probably try and hit this base. That's going to start to get a little bit uncomfortable. TLO has been able up to this point to avoid that being a problem. 
That has now ceased to be the case. Air superiority now firmly in the hands of Daishi with a lot of Vikings. 13 Vikings on the field versus 7 Corruptors. A lot of scans going down here, and TLO's going to lose these Swarm Hosts by the looks of it. Ugh! He's got some Roaches moving in. He may be able to break the back of these Hellbats, but he lost a lot of Swarm Hosts there, so that's not too great at all. That drop actually ends up hitting this base. He picks up and then it moves forward. And now the siege is going to happen on this fourth. This fourth has got to be held here by TLO. Otherwise, horrible things are going to happen. And with only seven swarm hosts and three ultralisks on the field, this could be even more difficult. Make it six swarm hosts. Vipers are coming in. But what are the Vipers going to do against 13 Vikings? They're not. Air superiority is not. Oh, down goes the Viking. Look at that. Viper's getting targeted immediately down. Blinding Cloud does go off, which is going to help, but I don't even know if there's enough units to stop this. He's going to do significant damage, though. Thor trying its best to gun its way through here, but the tanks are more than enough. And TLO GG's on the spot. Nicely played again by Daishi. He handles it with a different style, using mech. Not enough Vipers on the field. Air superiority for the Terran, which means you can't use the Vipers at all. Doesn't really have any lings on the ground. Doesn't really have what he needs to defend against that. And loses so many swarm hosts. Unfortunate. TLO falling to Daishi now. Who? Who, who, who? I have to ask. Do they send out next? Do we see Snoop coming out? That is a possibility. Do we see another Zerg thrown into the hands of Daishi? Or do we see one of the two big hitters for Team Liquid? Either Tasia or Hero coming out. We'll find out after this break, folks. Don't go anywhere. Restarting, so I will be restreaming. Okay. All right, fine. I will do the best that I can based on take stream here. And then I'll get back in. Seems like the best option right now. Yeah, okay. All right, I will randomly put some music in the background for this. <laughs> I know it's going to be a little bit weird. All right, this should work. He says as the buttons don't bloody work. God damn it, I hate it when it does that. All right, thank you, Take. I'm stealing your stream. Hopefully you don't feel bad about that. Hopefully your observing's good as well. So welcome to Whirlwind. You're not gonna get any game sounds, I'm afraid, because otherwise you're gonna get very, very angry German in the background. It's my pleasure to bring you Millennium's Daishi. He is in the Red Trunks and he is uh, playing Terran to the uh, southeast of this particular map versus his opponent Liquid Tasia, who currently needs to bring it back. It's already 2-0 down in favor of Team Millennium. Daishi has been doing some work here. No real question about that. Some pretty impressive stuff going on. Now let's see what we see. Gas coming down for both players. Makes sense. The thing about TBT right now is that there's a real risk for Reapers and also a real risk for Hellbat Drops. Hellbat Drops seem to be one of the most effective things to do, and if you're not counter Hellbat Dropping, it's very, very hard to kill them. Especially if they're coming in at you in waves. Neither of these guys are letting to go Reaper first. Okay. Cool. That works for me. Down immediately goes a factory. He's looking solid from his position. It's so awkward not to be able to click stuff. God, you have no idea how difficult this is going to be. Alright. Factory coming down immediately. There's the Reaper. Actually, a late Reaper from Tasia. I like that. Marine, then a Reaper. That's a bit sneaky. That comes at a wonky timing. And also, it means you've got a, at least a Marine to deal with it. And once the other Reaper... If the other guy's building a Reaper, you have a Marine and a Reaper to kill it with, which makes perfect sense. That's cool. So, we're noticing the factory going down. We're also noticing the reactor. This They're fairly close. We may see a swap over almost immediately. I suppose the revealing thing here will be whether or not one of these guys throws down an armory very, very early on. Single Hellion being built, and then we might see the swap around. There's the Starpot coming in almost immediately here. Still no armory. Could just be that regular Hellbat drop. Could, of course, be Widowmind's. Widowmind drop is still very effective here as well. Tasia's going to sit at the front in his lovely green uniform. Pretty sure it was blue. At least it was supposed to be. Apparently not there. But hey, there you go. Still not armory, but we do have the Tasia factory coming down. Tasia is electing to expand. Daishi is not. So Daishi needs to do damage with whatever he's planning on doing here. He is continually building Hellions at the moment. So we might just see straight up Hellion drop, which I like. Don't get me wrong. That should work pretty well. This Reaper has yet to really scout or manage anything here. Hmm, hmm, hmm. It's going to be tricky. 
This is a nice piece of music to to set in the nice tense area of this game. What's gonna happen? There we go. Starport coming in. So we're gonna see Hellion Marine initially. Most likely a drop from Daishi. That would make the most sense here. Could also be an elevation play. Something to bear in mind. But a Viking is coming out from Daishi as well. So he wants to try and get that initial air superiority as well as that vision. So he's picked up everything. He could, of course, drop into the main base. Try and assault the natural. I would be dropping the main base. Seems like Tasia's already aware of what's going on here. The Reaper does spot the Hellions and is... Is it going to get away? Nope. It is roasted. But it did its job. It spotted the Hellions coming in. So Tasia is aware of what's coming at him. He's building a Viking right now. However, Daishi is already building his own. You can see the movement across the map here. The Hellions down on the ground could also be elevated up using the Medivac. Depends on what he wants to try and do. Oh, I think Tasia might have misread this. He's looking for a frontal assault. It isn't. He's going to drop right into the base. But it looks like it's going to get spotted by that supply depot. In come the Hellions. Looking for the interception right there. Good angles to start with. Now the Medivac's going to move back and try and bring the other Hellions in. But that, of course, leaves those Marines exposed. Daishi actually got a good angle there. He was able to spread out against the Hellions, and now his own Hellions are in the base here as well. And Taisha's actually struggling here. Daishi is doing some damage. Down goes the Medivac. Looking to try and hit that mineral line, though. That's the crucial thing. Can he damage the mineral line in a big way? Viking lands here for Tasia as well to try and defend against this. Minimal damage has been done so far to the mineral line. A little bit of wasted mining time here and there. Another SCV goes down. Hellion desperately trying to drive that remaining unit away, which you will be able to... No. Whoa, 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 whoa. I was going to say, don't ignore that. That can still shoot, man. Trust me. Not a good idea. <coughs> Tasia survives. The Viking lands... And he's doing a great job of equalizing. Nice target fire with the Viking, taking down a mule and then getting out of there. Wonderful little move there by Daishi. So that equalized the work account quite nicely. Did it do enough damage? I think it might be. I think it may very well have actually done enough damage. And currently we've got a pause hotkey issue here by Tasia. Speaking of a hotkey issue, I've got a damn hotkey issue actually, so I just shouldn't click that button. I can't really go out of this because my hotkeys for scene 4 have unbound, so I can't do it without minimizing this. My apologies. Ah. Once again, for those of you who just tuned in, I'm currently casting a restream because StarCraft 2 Fatal errored out in the middle of a match. So I am casting from the Take TV stream right now. It's going a little bit blurry. I apologize for that. And obviously I have no control over it. But you do have Take's delicious face right there in the corner, which is more than you can say for my stream. Armory going down right here for Daishi. So I expect to see some Hellbat drop in any moment now, especially considering there's no indication that he really wants to go full mech. Not as of yet. He hasn't added on any more factories. Tasia with the worker lead right now, which is to be expected, considering he does have that command center up way, way earlier. That's the funny thing about the amount of damage that was done here. Tasia's actually going Cloak Banshee, which is a really interesting idea. I like that a lot. And Widow Mines are suddenly going to say hello to those Hellions. They killed two. However, Tasia makes his way into the mineral line, gets one shot off. Can he get a second one? Yes, he can. Looking for a third here. Can he do any damage? Yeah, I mean, he took a mule out and maybe one SCV. Not exactly great, but... He is still ahead in Harvesters, and I guess that's what is really important here. He survived that assault in the best possible way. 41 Harvesters now for Tasia. He is streaming ahead as a direct result, and he's about to have his third command setter up as well. Admittedly, Daishi is doing exactly the same thing. Daishi is a little bit behind economically, but you still have to worry about the ground army here. Hellbat's on the way out for Daishi, so we're going to be looking for Hellbat dropping. And we're going to look for Cloak Banshee here from Tasia. He's also adding an armory of his own, so he's going to want to get his own Hellbats out, I would imagine. Also adding on an engineering bay. This is The armory isn't really for upgrades, as far as I can tell right now. Unless, of course, he's just adding the engineering bay on for missile turrets and fully intends to play mech. But neither of these guys have built a lot of production facilities right now. But we've got Daishi going for mech, clearly. With two more factories being added on. Tasia also adding on two more factories. So, all right, mech versus mech coming on. Here comes the first Hellbat drop. Raven now in position for Daishi in defense. A couple of Hellbats being... Hell, Hellions, in fact, moving across the map here for Tasia. No, don't freeze now. Thank you. There you go. Okay, so Tasia is not prepared for this Hellbat drop. That I'm pretty damn convinced of. That is unfortunate. Where's the Banshee? Okay, so the Banshee is going to be attacking. It will come around there. It should do significant damage. There's actually no missile turret up, so this could hit pretty hard. I don't think the Daishi necessarily expects this. 
Tasia has a third base established, but this Hellbat drop could do significant damage. It depends when the, the units pop out here for Tasia. I mean, a Banshee's going to be up, but maybe about the right time. Here come the Vikings. The Raven's going to detect that quite nicely. So it's unfortunate, I suppose, for Tasia that his opponent happened to have a Raven. So the Cloak Banshee ploy is shut down very, very rapidly. Here comes that drop. There should be another Banshee popping out for Tasia any moment now. It will be able to handily DPS down those units, but not before he's going to take significant damage. There goes the Hellbat drop. One going down, second one coming down here as well. Tasia's going to do significant damage to the main mineral line, and Tasia's not even responding to this. There we go. That is pulled off there, but not after losing half of his worker line. That was pretty significant. Ah, uh, he does Oh, nice. There we go. Shoots that down. Nice use of the Marines combined with the Viking there to at least shut down any more damage. But that allowed Daisy to catch up significantly. You can see the Harvester count is now even, regardless of the fact that Daisy has a third base. The third CC for Daisy is complete. So nothing really special going on there. And Daishi now in a good defensive position and has more Hellbats. He's now going to roll across the map by the looks of it. What does Tasia have in response to this? A lot of regular Hellions building a lot more factories. And he's building some of his own tanks. Hard to say who has the most. Hopefully, Take will switch over to his the units tab in a second. And we can actually see that. But obviously, who knows? Guess we'll have to find out. Tasia looking for the flank here. He actually managed to avoid the entire army. He's going to catch a, a SCV transfer here. So this is going to be a freebie for him. No problems at all. He could actually go right for the natural here, I feel. But he will run into Widow Mines if he does. There is a tank in position, but nothing to stop that many Hellions. Couple of Banshees now rolling into position. Immediately find themselves in an awkward spot. Having to deal with Ravens. Having to deal with Vikings. And having to deal with Widow Mines. Not what you want to see. Hellion's are going to get caught out here by the looks of it. Tasia not responding quickly to that, but it did pull his opponent back, so that may very well be a ploy in order to try and keep him away. Another command center comes down here. Banshees remain cloaked, draining energy. Here comes the engagement. The siege tanks are now available, and they are deployed. Ooh, looking for an auto turret to actually stop. I like this. I like this a lot. Seek a missile and auto turret to stop the tanks from firing in the right position. Great move right here, but good target fire by Tasia. He's not going to fall for that one. Here comes the engagement. Daishi deals with the flank quite handily on the side here, but it looks like his army's actually going to get destroyed. There are too many tanks here for Tasia. He's also bringing the Cloak Banshees in now as well to clean up the remainder. Nice moves coming in here from Tasia. Puts him significantly ahead of Daishi in terms of his actual economy, which is always good. Now what do we have? A lot of SCVs. <laughs> Hell of a lot of SCVs. Tasia's economy is just on fire right now. Daishi looking to try and establish that third. In the meantime, the counterattack is rolling in from Tasia. A lot of tanks. And in this situation, it depends on who has the most tanks and who has the best position. Playing a little bit of classic. Classic mech versus mech style here. A lot of Hellbats on the field. But that's not going to help him a huge amount against this many tanks. Currently 10 tanks to 8 in favor of Tasia. However, I would say that the position is in favor of Daishi question is can he manage to make his way in there take some good shelling uh this is a pretty ugly spot here for Tasia. honestly he's taking a lot of shelling the raven pops off a seeker missile moving in and it looks like Tasia's army is actually gonna get obliterated here that daishi just completely destroyed it with superior positioning there Tasia took a couple of tank shots in fact several salvos of tank shots before he was able able to get in position there so i don't feel he necessarily knew what he was getting himself into and as a result daishi was able to take a significant supply lead Tasia's response to that is the standard Korean terror response, which is build more command centers. Oh, I'm losing? Build more command centers. Sounds like a great idea. That should do the job, certainly. Vikings rolling into a position. Air Superior, I believe, is in favor of Tasia right now by a small amount. Thor's now being added into the mix. Upgrades-wise, Tasia is powering ahead with Infernal Preigniter. Interesting choice, considering that does not, of course, affect Hellbats, so it indicates he wants to use Hellions at some point. Great sniper, the Raven there. Very, very nice indeed. Taking that out is absolutely crucial. And now Tasia is going to attempt to set up a position. He knows exactly where his opponents are now. This is a much, much better time. Rolls a tank right past the deployed tank line and thinks, mm, can I deploy here? Apparently not. So he's going to back off as much as he can. In the meantime, a Thor moves into position to try and knock down a few of those Vikings. Vikings get full scouting information. Daishi with the ninja command center up to the bottom, about the top right of the map here. More CCs being added on for both sides. Both of these guys come into full-on crazy macro mode. Daishi with the supply lead right now. Daishi not being aggressive, interestingly enough. Deciding not to drop anymore. 
Hasn't done any more economic damage to his opponent. I feel there were some opportunities to do that. Admittedly, Viking air superiority, as I've mentioned before, is in the favor of Tasia. However, you're not going to be able to cover the entire map of Whirlwind with Vikings. That's just unrealistic. So, a Hellbat drop could work here, potentially. More Banshees being added into the mix, which I do like. Now that the Raven's been taken out, those Cloak Banshees are going to be a little bit more effective. A couple of Medivacs moving in, but they're not actually filled with anything. Is he going to do a double Hellbat drop? I'd love to see a double Hellbat drop right now from either side, actually. They would just do so much damage. It's ridiculous. With both these guys posturing armies, Hellbat drop could actually gut a mineral line completely and put one of, <coughs> one of the plays significantly further ahead. Admittedly... Those drops are going to become less and less effective the further the game goes on, mostly because of the number of command centers that each player has. It's like, oh, well, you've got the mineral line. Here's some mules. Engagement coming in, and that's good positioning here for Tasia. Is he going to be able to do the job? There's a lot of Hellbats at the front here. There are just so many tanks here for Tasia, though. I just don't feel that Tasia can break it. And a nice Viking flank lands down. Thor engages against the tanks quite nicely here, and Tasia just obliterates that army in the center. Heavy losses incurred by both sides, but a clear win there for Tasia. Very nicely done. Currently, four bases up for both sides. A fifth base about to be established in the top right corner. No sign of drop play. Still not trying to deal with that. Daishi's worker supply significantly below Tasia's. And with both of these guys not being close to max yet, that is a... a I, never mind, it's the other way around, actually. Sorry about that. Daishi actually has more. Difficult to do when I'm not observing. I apologize. One way, the other tanks are now moving into position, and the container of the siege is now in effect. Will Tasia be able to do damage here? Well, I think I can safely say that CC is not going to be living anytime soon. Tasia actually with a bit of a micro blunder. It's going forward and running into a couple of Thors. But he still has good position here. Very good position. Daishi's army is plummeting in supply. The Banshees are now contributing quite nicely. Good little pickup by Deji. Looks like he's going to try and drop those tanks on top of the other tanks, which will work pretty well. Oh, he picks that one up as well. Nice little maneuvers here, but that doesn't mean the Tasia isn't ahead. I mean, he's just taken out the fourth or third base, whichever you prefer, of Deji, which is absolutely wonderful for him. And is now laying siege to another. Deji's army isn't really anywhere. Looks like Deji has somehow managed to do some damage in the background there. But I don't know if that's enough. Tasia is still rolling strong with his economy. Tasia is building five tanks and four Hellbats at once, looking for the upgrades here. Tasia's Hellbats now move into the third base and got that mineral line as well. And Daishi is now on the ropes, sort of relying on that hidden ninja base up to the corner. The transfer is caught and Daishi loses a ton of workers once again. He's falling apart now. Tasia's patience seems to be paying off here. Daishi is left with the possibility of being able to do significant damage to these retreating tanks, which I like a lot. That's one tank down. Can he take another? No, he can't. Moves out of range there. If he'd taken a second, that would have been nice. Can he save the CC? Uh, SCVs are moving into place. Yeah, he should be able to save that without too much of a problem. However, Tasia is not done. He turns around and says, you know what? This is a perfect opportunity for me to kill three more of your tanks. And that's exactly what he does. Blasts through those tanks very, very nicely. And right now, oh, he's moving into a siege position here. Does he have enough to break this? Daishi with good target fire right now, but I think there just might be too many tanks for Daishi to deal with. Tasia rolls on through. The army of Daishi crumbles completely, and he's trying to hold on as best he can and is able to get a good position against the tanks pushing up the line here. And I suppose he still thinks, oh, I've got a ninja expansion, so that might work, but I have a feeling that his days are numbered right now. 71 supply to 131. He's re-established that base here. Tasia continues to roll out tanks, however. Building seven Hellbats and four tanks at once. Insanity. His plus three just finished. He's working on his plus two armor as well. He has established about 5,000 bases across the map. Things are looking really good for him. And it looks like that base is about to get scouted. You notice on the minimap, blue indicator. There he is. A couple of Hellbats are about to march their way into the secret base and say, ah, well... I'm afraid you're not going to be mining from here anytime soon. That could be the last hope of Tasia, the last hope of Daishi, in fact, melting quite nicely. Oh, he, and he actually has transformation servos, like the only Terran in the world to ever build that. And as a result, he's able to catch those SCVs and those mules, which wouldn't have got home anyway. But it, it's a victory. It's a victory. All right, drop time, by the looks of it. Daishi's like, I've got to do something here. I must do something, but I don't see what he can do, other than trying to aggressively drop as much as he can. And he's pulling his army away from the front here. Meaning this gigantic ball of tanky death rolls down his natural expansion and then just kills him. 
which is what's likely to happen right here. Tejo's going to go for the throat right now. Exactly the right thing to do. Tejo's also building four more... He's, wow, he's actually building four more star pots. Looking for the battle cruiser transition or mass banshee. Both of these are pretty effective, but I don't think he's going to need it, honestly. Morphs to Hellbats right in front of him, and a huge siege tank salvo rains down on Daishi's army. The Hellbats move forward, engage against the Thor. The Hellbats will finally die, but there's like 5,000 tanks. Effective drops here by Daishi, able to gut the economy of Tasia. But does it matter with like seven command setters? It really doesn't. Tasia doesn't actually need SCVs right now, especially since he's killing all of the SCVs of his opponent obliterates that mineral line. Daisha goes for yet another Hellbat drop, which is probably going to kill the entire mineral line again, but at the end of the day, if it ends up in a base trade scenario, you know who's going to win it. GG, says Daisha, and down he goes. There we go. Tasia puts one on the map here. That's what we like to see. That is what we like to see. Thank you to Taker. I stole his stream for that particular presentation. Well, well, well. Nicely done. One on the board. One on the board there for Team Liquid. We will be right back after this short break, folks. It will be a short one, considering that we were just casting off stream delay right there. So things are a little bit later than they should be. But I will be right back. It's currently 2-1 in favor of Team Millennium. Tasia is now on the board. Let's see who Millennium decides to send out next. <laughs> 